everyone welcome back to lecture series on aerospace propulsion so this one second marthu pandey so in the previous lecture uh, we were discussing about the uh, what is the need for ramjet and scramjet and what is the problem we face in the uh, ramjet and scramjet engine all we have discussed in the previous class okay so in today's class what we are going to see is that we are going to see something about a thrust equation okay so what is this thrust equation in sense you see any propulsion system we take or we use in the uh, aircrafts okay there is basically what is the purpose of the propulsion system it is to either to produce the uh, thrust force or to produce the shaft power okay so as such it is important to know uh, what is the mathematical equation for the thrust and how do we calculate the thrust generated by a particular propulsion system so what we are going to do now is that we are going to derive the uh, mathematical equation for a Uh, thrust to produced by a turbojet engine for a general engine we are going to uh, derive the thrust equation okay so uh, what uh, we are going to use for deriving this thrust equation is that we are going to basically utilize the uh, conservation of mass and momentum so which we have already uh, studied in the aerodynamics uh, low speed aerodynamics as well as in the high speed aerodynamics so we are going to make use of this conservation of mass continuity equation and momentum equation in order to derive the thrust equation for a, a turbojet engine okay so uh, let us consider an a thrust producer which is kept inside the control volume okay you know what is control volume right where your volume is fixed and uh, uh, the mass flow will enter and leave the system that type of system what we call it as the control volume system so you know your aircraft engine is basically a control volume system right because the uh, shape of your engine or volume of your engine is fixed so mass flow enters inside the engine and it leaves the engine so i could say the best example for the control volume is the engine uh, aircraft engine so here i've taken an aircraft engine okay so which i'm uh, keeping it inside a control volume and uh, inside this control volume say uh, i've kept my engine so what is the inlet and exit velocity of the flow which is entering inside the control volume and leaving the control volume are basically they are u so what i am assuming is that the process across this control volume is isentropic so that means there are no losses is occurring so you could say that the velocity is not at all changing except in the zone where i have the nozzle because across your nozzle what we do inside the engine we sir take the air we do the combustion and we accelerate the air so basically the at the exit or location over the uh, nozzle you will have the increased velocity but other than that remaining area say you can see here uh, inlet velocity is u and the pressure is pa similarly at the exit of our uh, control surface that is uh, velocity is u and uh, except the location where i have the nozzle so this you can see the vector representation it is uh, bigger because this location your velocity is more and similarly the exit area of the nozzle i am going to take it as ae and the mass flow enters inside the engine which is m dot a and mass flow rate leaves the engine which is m dot e okay so this m dot e is basically the mass flow rate comes out of your engine and m dot a is mass flow enters inside the engine and we know in order to do the combustion we have to inject fuel to the engine so your m dot f also is a one of mass flow rate enters inside your engine so from the conservation of mass you could say m dot a plus m dot f is basically which is equal to m dot e okay and here this m dot s is side mass flow rate because once the flow enters inside the control volume how much amount of mass flow rate is leaving on the side walls of our control volume what we call it as the uh, side mass flow rate okay and here you see this reaction so the reaction force is generated by the uh, thrust or flow which is coming out of your nozzle which is we call it as the reaction force okay so these are the two assumption which we are going to make for the derivation of this thrust equation so first assumption is that i am assuming that the flow inside the control volume is steady basically they are the flow property inside your control volume they are independent of time okay that is time rate of change of your flow property is zero and i'm assuming that the external flow is reversible flow that is the 
flow over this uh, here it is going over right in this location i am assuming that the flow is reversible process so that's why the velocity at the inlet as well as the exit of our um, control volume is u only irrespective of the presence of solid body we assume that the process is reversible process that is basically isentropic process okay so as i mentioned earlier we are going to make use of a conservation of mass as well as conservation of momentum in order to derive the continuity equation so as i stated from the conservation of mass if i go if i am taking a any stream tube at any location the mass flow rate is going to remain constant okay so that means here uh, we can say from the conservation of mass uh, the mass flow enters inside the engine will be equal to mass flow rate leaves the engine so that's what what are the mass flow mass enters inside your engine one is the m dot a which is basically mass flow rate of air which is entering through the intake of our engine and m dot f which is uh, injected in the combustion chamber that is mass flow rate of fuel which will be equal to the uh, mass flow rate which is leaving your engine so we know the equation for mass flow rate m dot is equal to rho a v this is a general equation for mass flow rate so you could say the mass flow rate enters inside the engine m dot a which is equal to so we have uh, density of our air is rho and velocity of your uh, inlet flow is u and what is the area of your inlet area of your engine which is ai so rho u ai will give you mass flow rate of air which enters inside the engine and m dot e is the mass flow rate leaves your engine which is basically rho e u e into p e okay so it is a e actually okay now um, here uh, we know m dot uh, f is equal to we can write it as m dot f is equal to m dot e minus m dot a so m dot f will become rho u rho e u e into a e minus rho u a i okay so let us say this is equation number one and you know the uh, fuel air ratio uh, that is f which is the ratio of mass flow rate of fuel divided by the mass flow rate of air m dot f by m dot a and we know uh, the uh, integral form of our continuity equation okay so uh, do rho by sorry do by do t of inter triple integral rho dv plus double integral of rho u into da which is equal to zero this is the uh, integral form of our continuity equation we know we have already assumed our flow to be steady flow so the time rate of change of your flow property will be zero so we can say that this term will become uh, zero so we will have only this term that is uh, summation of the mass flow rate uh, uh, through the particular uh, passage which will be equal to zero that is uh, see mass flow enters will be equal to mass flow leaves okay so mass flow enters minus uh, mass flow leaves will be equal to zero that's what we have written here so here this equation i'm going to write what is the mass flow rate leaving the system minus what is the mass flow rate enter the system will be equal to zero okay now what is this m dot e which is mass flow rate leaves your system on the location where your engine is there that is m dot e and we have seen that side mass flow rate which is also leaving your system it is m dot s plus rho u into a minus a e okay that is rho a v is so mass flow rate right so what is this a minus a e so this is a and this is a e so a minus a e will give you what is the mass flow rate through this space area okay in this area how much amount of mass flow rate is leaving that is what this equation yeah this equation rho u into a minus a e okay so this is the amount of mass flow rate leaving the system okay now minus what is the mass flow rate enters the system which will be equal to zero or you could say mass flow rate leaving the system will be equal to mass flow rate entering the system 
So what is the mass flow rate entering the system? First one is M dot A, which is mass flow rate through the engine and uh, uh, plus or uh, here if I am going to take minus as common or uh, say minus M dot A minus M dot F, which is once again the mass flow rate of fuel minus rho U A minus A I. What is this rho U A minus A I? Uh, C A minus A I will be this portion. So, in this area, how much amount of mass flow rate is entering inside the control volume is the this particular one. Okay, rho u into a minus a i, which will be equal to 0. Okay, so if I simplify this equation from this, we say uh, this rho u a, rho u a will be cancelled out. Okay, and you can write m dot f as say m dot e as uh, m dot a plus m dot f okay so that m dot a and m dot f will be cancelled out so we will have uh, this term m dot s is equal to rho u into uh, a minus a e see a e minus a i will have this term so m dot s okay and uh, we know from the momentum equation that is uh, basically what is your momentum equation that is force is equal to uh, change of momentum right so f is equal to what is the change of momentum so this term will become zero because uh, we already stated the flow is steady so time rate of change of your flow property will become zero we will have only this term okay so now uh, your for steady flow your equation momentum equation will become summation of f is equal to double integral uh, of u into rho u um, into dA. Okay. So, now uh, we are going to take only the x component of our momentum equation because we have for momentum equation x, y and z direction. But here we are trying to derive the force in the x direction alone that is thrust is in the x direction. So, we are not worried about or uh, we are not bothered about the y and z direction. So, I am going to assume only or I am going to take only the x component of my momentum equation. So, from that I can say fx, first we have to find out what is the forces in the x direction and we have to find out what is the momentum change in the x direction. So, now what is the forces in the x direction? So, from this uh, here, see what is the force in this x direction? That is tau. Okay tau plus and see here I have PE okay and we have the atmospheric pressure PA. So, in this location we will have a pressure difference okay. So, that is PA minus PE into AE okay that is also because what is your pressure it is force per unit area. So, this will give you the force due to the pressure difference at the uh, exit of our nozzle that is PA minus PE into AE plus tau. So, this is the force. Now, we have to find out what is the momentum change in the x direction. Okay. So, the momentum change in the x direction. So, that is similar to that of your continent equation say uh, M dot E into UE. The momentum will be given by this mass flow rate into velocity. So, m dot e into u e plus uh, u into say rho u into a minus a e. Okay. So, uh, here this is the equation for your uh, momentum equation. If I simplify this equation, we will have m dot e into u e minus m dot a into u minus rho u square into a e minus a i plus m dot s into u. Okay. We already have the equation for m dot s, which is m dot s is equal to rho u into a e minus a, which we got from the continuity equation. Okay. Now, if I am going to substitute this in this equation, we will be left out with m dot e u e minus m dot a into u. So, we know this value. I am going to substitute in the momentum equation m dot e into u e minus m dot a into u, which is equal to minus PE minus PA into AE plus tau. Now, 
this tau that reaction force what we call it as the thrust force so your tau will be equal to m dot a into so what is the equation the tau will be equal to m dot e u e minus m dot a into u uh, plus a into p minus p a okay so here we know m dot e is m dot a plus m dot f into u e minus m dot a into u plus a into p minus p a okay so in this if i'm going to take uh, m dot um, a as a common term we will have 1 plus m dot f by m dot a into u e minus u okay so that m dot f by m dot a which we call it as f so your equation thrust equation tau will be equal to m dot a into 1 plus f into u e minus u plus p e minus p a into a e okay so this is the uh, general thrust equation for the uh, jet engines okay so in this this portion what we call it as the uh, momentum thrust because this is due to the momentum difference between the exit and uh, inlet of our engine and this is we call it as the pressure thrust okay so why do we call it as a pressure thrust this is because here this is due uh, this thrust component is due to the pressure difference at the exit of our nozzle that's why we call it as the uh, pressure thrust okay so tau is the net thrust so m dot a into 1 plus f into u e we call it as the momentum thrust and P minus P A into A, we call it as the uh, pressure thrust. And uh, the summation of these two, we call it as the gross thrust. And in that term, M dot A into U, we call it as the momentum drag. Okay. With this, I will finish uh, this today's lecture. Okay. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.